Gradient descent is an iterative optimization algorithm used to minimize the cost function or error in machine learning models. It's a fundamental algorithm in the training of models, particularly in the context of supervised learning. In this video, we discuss how the algorithm applies to binary classification and in particular how the cost function should be chosen. So, in terms of the cost function, for regression problems, it's intuitive that a good choice is a so-called mean squared error. Um, and this particular cost fun function is intuitive because it really looks at the difference between the model prediction and the real labels, and somehow it just sums them up uh, with some power 2, for, for which there is a simple argument, and then it takes the mean, it divides by n, and again, for some particular reason, there is also this division by 2. The reason why this is a good choice, and indeed the most popular choice for regression problems, is that um, this leads to a so-called convex function, uh, one where there is only one local global minimum point, and so numerical approximation algorithms um, can find iteratively this minimum point. Uh, and indeed, that's what gradient descent for um, regression problem uh, does, it finds this global minimum. Now, using the mean squared error, so this particular cost function, in principle it's also possible for classification problems because you have all you need in here. You have your uh, labels, um, they are just 0 or 1, and then you have your model predictions, um, which is just a, uh, a number in the interval 0, 1. So in principle you could calculate this sort of loss function and apply it as is. The problem with applying it to um, classification, and in particular logistic regression, is that it leads to a non-convex function. So the landscape of the mean squared error for classification problem looks much more like this than, than like that. In other words, it, it's a function that has many, potentially many local minima. So when you're applying a numerical alg algorithm such as gradient descent, there is a chance that you might end up in one of these uh, local minima and rather miss the global minimum. Um, so that's the problem with this particular function. But then, I mean, you have this idea that maybe we can change a little bit um, in this loss function and, for example, keep the idea of a mean loss. Um, it has its advantages. It allows you to compare losses between two different data sets regardless of their size. So this idea of having a mean loss per data point is good, <clears throat> but maybe we should just change the um, uh, main term in the loss function. In other words, maybe we should change this part, uh, this squared error, with something else. And that's what I want to discuss about. Um, in this discussion, the main objective is that we are going to get a convex function. Um, and in this discussion, I'm going to assume that our labels are just 0 and 1. We're only discussing binary classification. And I'm going to assume that we have a general classification model, not just logistic regression, but any binary classification um, model in here, where the output is just a, um, a continuous function taking values in the interval 0 and 1. And so there are many different ways in which the loss function could be chosen. The most popular one by far for binary classification is the so-called log loss or logistic loss function. And, and that's what I want to argue for. Why is it chosen in the way it's chosen and um, uh, what kind of um, considerations it leads in terms of uh, decision um, criteria. So in, in the discussion leading to the log loss function, again, we are assuming we have a binary classification problem where the labels are just 0 and 1, and our model predictions are in the interval 0, 1. And so the objective of choosing this sort of loss function is that we would like to have obviously zero loss for the correct prediction. Um, so the correct prediction being, you know, 0 or 1, our model prediction is a continuous function in this interval. So what I mean by that is that if your real label is zero and your model prediction is somewhat in this interval very close to zero, so you would like to have very small loss and, and potentially uh, close to zero. On the other hand, if your model prediction um, is at the wrong end of the interval, so your real label, say, was zero, 
and your prediction is rather close to the other end of the interval, you would like to give very high penalties because you are far from the real label for that particular point. And so the objective is, is going to be to choose a function, a loss function, that has this property that it gives you zero loss or very small, as, as close as possible to zero for correct predictions, and it's going to give you very high penalties um, when you are, uh, you know, closer to the wrong prediction. And so the question would be what kind of function gives you that? And one simple choice is to look at the logarithm function, uh, because log logarithm function, when you apply it on the interval 0 and 1, is exactly what you need. Uh, on one end of the interval, interval, uh, I mean, at the one end of this interval, it takes value 0, and at this end of the interval takes value minus infinity. Uh, and of course, I mean, if you just flip this function and so you are looking at the minus logarithm, then it's going to be exactly what you want. That one end of the interval is going to take value 0, and that the other end of the interval is going to take value uh, plus infinity. So we are going to work with this logarithm function and turn it into this sort of uh, loss function idea that, that we want to get. And here is how you reason about this. I'm, I'm going to write in here... Um, I'm going to just denote, just for simplicity of writing, I'm going to denote the prediction of, mo of my model by, by P. So I have my model phi, W, W are the parameters of this um, uh, model, and it's applied to a data point X, and the output I'm denoting it by, by P, and remember that I'm assuming, um, you know, this being a classification problem, that this is um, a number in the interval 0 and 1. And I would like to reason about, you know, how correct and how or how wrong my um, uh, the output of the model and, and my predi the prediction of my model is from the real label. So if um, the real label for this data point um, is equal to 1, so if y equals 1, um, then it's going to be like this. If p is about 0, so what I mean by this is close to 0 in this, in this interval, then obviously you have the wrong prediction because the prediction should have been 1 and your model is outputting, outputting something close to 0. So you should really have um, very high loss. And um, if P is about 1, then you should aim to have loss about zero uh, because your model is predicting um, something very close to the real label. So what I'm what I'm saying is that the loss function, so the loss could be chosen in this case to be exactly minus logarithm of p. And it does the trick because again if p is closer to one logarithm is going to be quite close to zero. So that's that's what we wanted and when p is closer to 0, the logarithm is going to be minus infinity, and with the minus in front, it's going to give us a very high uh, loss exactly as we want it. So choosing minus logarithm of p in the case of when the label is 1 seems to uh, really go towards what we wanted to have. I also discuss the case when the label is 0, so the label of this point where we took our model prediction on is 0. And so again we are thinking, you know, if p is about 0, so if the prediction of the model is about um, 0, then we are very close to the correct prediction. So our loss should be, um, you know, small. We are close to giving the um, correct prediction. But on the other hand, if p is rather closer to 1, then we should have a very high loss, um, because again we are at the wrong end of that interval we should be rather closer to zero, but we are rather closer to one. So what I'm saying is that in this case, we are going to choose, for example, the loss to be minus logarithm of one minus p. And this makes sense. Um, if p is about zero, then one minus p is about one, logarithm of one is about zero. So that's exactly what we wanted to have. On the other hand, if p is about one, one minus p is about zero, log then becomes rather towards minus infinity with the minus in front is going to give us this high loss that we were aiming for. So again, a choice that seems to go in the right direction. 
Now, these two kind of considerations, depending on the label, can be com combined into a single loss function that has a compact representation. And I'm going to write it down and then I, I comment why this uh, choice actually works out. So overall, what I'm saying is that we are going to choose this loss function. And this, in fact, is the uh, log loss or logistic loss function. Um, and it has this particular form. I'm going to take it to be minus and then I have a big parenthesis. And in here, I'm going to have y times log p plus 1 minus y log 1 minus p. And I'm closing the parenthesis. And I, I am, I'm commenting that, in fact, it's just bringing to these two cases together into a single formula. Um, and this is indeed so. Remember that our labels y are just 0 or, or 1. So if I'm looking at this loss function for a label that's zero, it means that this particular term disappears and I'm left exactly with this term, which is exactly what I had in here. Y being zero, it means that this is um, one. So I'm going to have in this case exactly minus log one minus P, which is what I argued for in here. If Y is equal to one, then this term disappears because one minus one is equal to zero. So I only have this one and it's going to be minus log p, which is exactly what I argued for in here. So this formulation doesn't do anything else than just brings these two cases together by combining the label with the model prediction. So this is all there is in the log loss function. Uh, obviously, when I'm training a model over a bigger training data set, I'm going to have to compute this loss over each one of the data points in the training set. And, th and that's going to give us overall the um, uh, loss over the entire training data set. I'm just going to write it in here. So um, just like we normally do, for example, for the linear regression models, the loss is going to be a function of the parameters of the model. And it's going to be collected over the entire the training data set. And with this idea that we are going to have a mean error, so I'm going to divide by 1 over n, and I'm going to sum it up over all the points in the data set. And because I have this minus in the log um, uh, loss function, I'm going to bring this minus in front in here, and then I'm, I'm having the sum over this term. So the sum is going to be uh, over the label for point i, so yi, logarithm of the prediction of my model, uh, the model being 5w, applied to data point xi, and then plus, this is the second term in the log loss function, is going to be 1 minus the label yi times logarithm 1 minus the prediction of the model. And I'm closing just one parenthesis in here. Now, this is a very good choice because, um, in fact, it can be proved. I, I don't prove it in this video, but this actually leads to a cost function that's convex. So all of these considerations regarding uh, does my function have a single minimum point, then they hold true for this particular choice. And that opens the door to numerical algorithms such as gradient descent to work fine. Um, just one more comment that I want to make on this log loss function. Um, again, I'm not commenting in, in this video, but this is connected to very careful probabilistic considerations. Uh, if you think about the model being a probabilistic model and you think about things such as the maximum likelihood estimator, that again leads to the same idea of having this particular uh, logistic loss function. So taking now the numerical approach, once we have this logistic loss function, um, this is a convex function, it has a single minimum point, so that opens the door to numerical algorithms such as gradient descent. And gradient descent for classification problems is exactly the same as in the case of regression problems, except that it's using this logistic loss function rather than um, the mean squared error, which was the uh, popular choice for regression problems. So the objective overall for gradient descent in this case is exactly the same. You want to find the parameter values that minimize your cost function over the training data. So, so in other words, you want to find the values of your parameters, however many you may have, which give you the minimum 
cost function over the data set. And the algorithm itself is exactly the same as in the case of regression problems. You are going to start with random initial values for your um, uh, parameters. And then you have an iterative run of your algorithm where in each step you are going to have an update rule. You are going to update the values of your parameter with this. It's going to be W minus alpha times the partial derivative of this uh, uh, log loss function with respect to your parameters. And the idea why, uh, you know, partial derivatives make sense Again, it's a it's very similar conceptually to what we have on, in the regression problems. You just want to have the steepest descent in the value of your um, cost function. And so that leads you to the idea of having these um, uh, partial derivatives because they are connected to taking the uh, uh, biggest um, uh, descent in, in, in this step. And then you also have this multiplication with um, the learning rate alpha. alpha which gives you the amplitude of each update step. Um, in the case of logistic regression, um, I just want to show you what gradient descent does, what the algorithm is. So for logistic regression, the, the model that we are considering is this one where we take a linear combination of the features. So we are going to have for D features, we are going to have D plus one parameters w0 all the way to wd and then this linear combination is fed through the uh, sigmoid function and remember that the sig sigmoid function was 1 over 1 plus e to, uh, to minus z and as usual for classification problems we are using the logistic cost function which is um, minus 1 over n and then you have this sum uh, the label times the logarithm of the uh, model output plus one minus the label logarithm of one minus the model output. And the update rule is exactly what I had on the previous slide. You have this um, uh, update rule with, depending on the partial derivatives. The only thing that I want to just show on this slide is what is the partial derivative of this um, uh, logistic cost function in the case where the model is this logistic regression. And I'm going to, to just show it, not, not really derive it for you. Uh, so I, I just show it and, and then I make a comment about this. The partial derivatives uh, that you need to implement this update rule in the gradient descent for logistic regression are shown just in here. Now, if you compare with the update rule for logistic regression uh, on which um, uh, we we have a video, you are going to see that, in fact, the update rules and the partial derivatives are exactly the same. Um, this only comes out as, as the result of, you know, calculating the partial derivatives of this particular function with the sigmoid and the logarithm applied to it. So um, it's, not, it, it's not obvious that it should be like that, but once you, you do the calculation, um, it just happens to come up to exactly the same form as in the case of the uh, linear regression um, model.